Hi, this is uh, my first lecture in module uh, uh, called uh, model adequacy checking. Uh, in this model, uh, uh, here uh, first I will uh, describe you know, the problem, what is uh, model uh, adequacy checking. Uh, what we do in, in simple linear regression or in the multiple linear regression, uh, we make some uh, basic uh, assumptions uh, on error. For example, you know we assume that uh, uh, the uh, error uh, has uh, 0 mean and uh, also we assume that the error term has uh, constant variance uh, and the errors are uh, uncorrelated and also we assume that the errors are uh, normally distributed. And uh, okay, let me just you know uh, 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 write uh, the things uh, formally. Uh, recall uh, the simple linear regression. The model here is uh, y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x plus epsilon and for the ith observation just uh, we put i i i here for i equal to 1 to n and for the multiple linear regression y i equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x i 1 plus beta k minus 1 x i k minus 1 plus epsilon i. Okay, so, this is a multiple linear regression model with uh, with k minus 1 uh, regressor variables. So, the basic assumptions here the assumptions are uh, expectation of E i is equal to 0 variance of E i uh, that is the uh, error terms epsilon has constant variance. The variance of epsilon i is equal to sigma square errors are uncorrelated. And also we assume that the errors are normally distributed. Okay, so, uh, all together I can write that epsilon i follows normal with mean 0 and variance sigma square and they are independent and uh, identically distributed. Okay. So, uh, today what we will do is that uh, we will I mean uh, in this module basically what we will do is that we will present uh, several uh, techniques to check this, uh, these basic assumptions on error whether they are correct or not. So, uh, you know uh, gross violation from these assumptions may yield a model uh, uh, which is very unstable, right. So, uh, in this module we will we'll learn how to uh, given a set of data uh, whether the data set uh, satisfy this uh, basic assumptions uh, or not. Okay. So, uh, 
uh, we will talk about you know several uh, um, plotting of residuals. Okay. So, based on that uh, we will check uh, whether the these uh, assumptions are correct or not. Okay. So, the residual first uh, you know what is uh, the residual in, in, in simple uh, linear regression model or multiple linear regression model. So, E i the ith residual is uh, equal to y i minus y i hat. So, uh, y i is the ith, ob ith observation. So, y i is an observation and uh, y i hat is the corresponding fitted value. Okay, so uh, uh, this is this is uh, called the you know the re regular residuals, and uh, this uh, E i the ith uh, regular residual it uh, measures uh, the part of variability in the response variable which is not explained by the model because E i is the difference between the uh, original data I mean the response value y i and the fitted value. So, the part which has not been explained by the uh, regression model uh, is is E i. Okay. So, it is uh, you know uh, very convenient to uh, to uh, treat this uh, E i as the uh, observed value of the epsilon i because we want to test uh, uh, the assumption on E i sorry uh, assumption on, on epsilon i that is the error. Uh, we assume that the epsilon i follows uh, normal 0 sigma square and they are uh, independent and identically distributed. So, uh, so the observed value I mean this uh, residuals E i's are treated as you know the observed value of the errors epsilon i's. Okay. So, uh, what we know about uh, E i is that um, first of all epsilon i's are this is some observation you know uh, you know that epsilon i's we assume that epsilon i's are independent, but the residuals e i's are not independent. As the end residuals have only n minus k degree of freedom because uh, you know uh, you know uh, about this degree of freedom uh, all this e i is you know the residuals we cannot choose uh, independently. I am talking about multiple linear regression model uh, with uh, with k minus 1 regressors. So, uh, there are uh, k constraint on uh, involving e i. Uh, so, we cannot choose all the e i is 
uh, the residuals independently. So, we can choose n minus k of them uh, independently and the remaining k uh, Eis uh, have to be chosen in such a way that, uh, that they say satisfy those uh, k constraint. Well, uh, so what uh, I said is that you know uh, it is it is since we are we are trying to check whether this assumption E i follows normal zero sigma square this i i d whether this is true or not. Uh, uh, this is i i d or not, uh, it is uh, it is convenient to think of the residuals as the observed value of the errors. Okay? and uh, you know plotting uh, the residuals is an effective way to investigate how well the regression model fit the data or to check the model assumptions. Okay, so uh, uh, we will we'll learn about uh, several uh, residual plots uh, uh, in this module and before that you know I just uh, want to introduce uh, two uh, definitions, uh, one is called you know uh, the I mean uh, uh, the leverage and uh, the influential observations because the things are uh, connected. Uh, let me just you know uh, first uh, introduce uh, what we mean by uh, the what we mean by leverage point and uh, influential observation. Okay, so see here is uh, a scatter plot of the observation uh, xi yi. So suppose you know I have some observations x i y i and uh, this is the uh, scatter plot of the given data. Now, you see the point uh, a the point a this has unusual x coordinate from the rest of the observations. Okay. So, the x coordinate for this point is much larger than the x coordinate of the remaining observations. So, this, this is an example of a leverage point. Okay, I'll some. I'll give some uh, 
some numerical example for uh, for leverage point and and the influential uh, observation also. So uh, if a data point has unusual x coordinate, but here you, you note that you know the, this point is lying on the general uh, trend of the observation. So if you fit the given data here, uh, the fitted model will be something like this. Okay, so uh, this one you know uh, uh, lies on the uh, fitted uh, fitted model uh, fitted uh, uh, line. Now I'll talk about uh, uh, influential observation. So again, you know, this is uh, this is a scatter plot uh, for the observation x i, y i, i equal to one to n, and uh, the point A here is called uh, an influential observation. Uh, you check that you know this point has uh, moderately unusual x coordinate and the y value is also un unusual. Okay? So, uh, both the x coordinate and y coordinate. So, if I say this point is say x a y a. Uh, then both x a and y a are larger you know compared not, not larger I mean their uh, their uh, far I mean uh, what I want to say is that you know, x a is 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 uh, is different from the from the center of x coordinates and similarly y a is different from the center of uh, uh, y coordinate. Well, so this, uh, this is you know here a this point a is, is not lying on the general trend of the data set. So, this is uh, an this is a leverage point as well as it is not on the it is not on the general trend of the data set. So, this is this type this type of observation is called uh, influential observation and the influential observation has uh, noticeable impact on uh, model coefficients. Okay, so, just uh, uh, let me just you know again uh, uh, let me tell that what is uh, you know uh, leverage point and uh, influential observation. So, a point is said to be leverage point if it has unusual x coordinate, but the point may lie on the uh, general trend of the data. But in case of influential observation, uh, a point or an observation you know is said to be influential observation if it has uh, unusual x coordinate as well as it has unusual um, moderately unusual y coordinate. Okay? Uh, now again, you know, uh, uh, today what we'll do is that we'll uh, we'll talk about uh, several um, uh, scaled residuals. Uh, so first, I'll start with the hat matrix, and uh, then I'll talk about several uh, scaled residual. Well.
the hat matrix and uh, various types of uh, residuals. Okay. Uh, let me just recall you know uh, the, the multiple linear regression model. In matrix form, uh, we write this as y equal to x beta plus epsilon. So, y is a vector of uh, y 1 I mean uh, uh, n uh, responses and uh, beta is also a vector of you know beta naught, beta 1 up to beta k minus 1 and epsilon is a vector uh, epsilon 1, epsilon 2 up to epsilon n. And what we assume here is that the variance of epsilon is equal to sigma square i. Okay, so, this is the base assumption we make, uh, this is i n. Now, solution of this uh, multiple linear regression model is we know that beta hat is equal to x prime x inverse x prime y if x prime x is non singular. Okay, so, we know uh, now how to uh, this is the uh, this is the least square estimate estimator of the regression coefficient x prime x inverse x prime y. Uh, so, the fitted model the fitted model is y hat is equal to x beta hat which is equal to x x prime x inverse x prime y. So, just you know uh, plug beta hat here uh, and this is equal to equal. So, this is equal to h y say where of course, h equal h is equal to x x prime x inverse x prime. So, this matrix uh, is called the hat matrix. So, this is called the hat matrix because you know uh, this is called hat matrix because it uh, it maps y to y hat that's why it is called you know hat matrix anyway so the elements of h is equal to say h i j which is equal to h 1 1 h 1 2 h 1 n h 2 1 h 2 2 h 2 n h n 1 h n 2 h n n. So, this is what the hat matrix and you know how to how to calculate the uh, elements of the hat matrix because x is known then you can compute uh, the elements of the hat matrix h. Well, now we will talk about you know uh, several properties of uh, hat matrix. Uh, first of all uh, h is 
it can be uh, verified that H is symmetric. Uh, that is uh, H transpose or you know H transpose is equal to equal to H. And the second property is that uh, H the hat matrix H is, is idempotent. That is H square is equal to h. Well, uh, let me prove this one. Uh, what is h, h square? h square is equal to h into h. Uh, my hat matrix h is equal to uh, x x prime x inverse x prime and this is h into h. So, x x prime x inverse x ok. So, this is equal to now this will uh, cancel out. So, this is x x prime x inverse x which is equal to which is equal to h again ok. So, uh, the two properties of the hat matrix is the hat matrix is symmetric and it is also <coughs> and uh, idempotent matrix. And now, uh, the residual you know in, in, in matrix notation the residual is equal to y minus y hat right. So, y minus y hat is equal to y minus now y hat we know that y hat is equal to h y. So, h y which can be written as i minus h into y. Okay. So, this is equal to i minus h and y is equal to x beta plus epsilon. So, this is equal to x beta minus h x beta plus i minus h epsilon. Okay. So, this is equal to x beta <coughs> sorry. So, x uh, h is equal to uh, x x prime x inverse x prime x beta. So, this is h and then x beta plus i minus h epsilon. Okay. So, this one is nothing but, so this is x beta minus again x beta plus i minus h epsilon. So, this is equal to i minus h epsilon. Okay, so, uh, 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 what, what I am trying to do is that you know uh, uh, in this lecture my, my aim is to uh, introduce uh, several uh, scaled residual. What we know till now is that uh, we, we know that is just the regular residual that is E i. Okay. Now, we will we'll talk about uh, several scaled residual which are uh, useful to uh, for some purpose. Okay. So, uh, um, we will talk about you know standardized residual, we will talk about uh, uh, student 
uh, student residual and also we will talk about uh, the press residual. Okay, so, uh, for those purpose you know I need to find the variance covariance matrix of the residual. Uh, so, variance of epsilon i is equal to sigma square, but variance of E i, uh, E i we treat as you know uh, the observed value of the epsilon i, but variance of E i is not sigma square. Okay, so, what I am trying to do is that I am trying to find the variance of uh, the ith residual E i. Okay, so, what I have at this moment, I have, uh, I know that E i is equal to 1 minus h uh, into epsilon i. Okay. So, what I know is that uh, E i, E is equal to i minus h epsilon. Now, I can find, you know, the variance covariance matrix variance covariance matrix of E. Uh, so, variance covariance matrix of E is a vector, right. So, variance covariance matrix of E equal to uh, I minus H sigma square i i minus h it's a very standard one uh, and this is equal to sigma square i minus h square now now as uh, H, uh, we know that the hat matrix H is uh, an idempotent matrix. Uh, then uh, you can check that if H is idempotent, then I minus H is also uh, idempotent. So I minus H square is equal to I minus H. So this is, you know, we can write as this is equal to sigma square I minus H. So, this is the variance covariance matrix of E. Uh, e is, you know, it is a vector, you know, we, uh, I hope you understand that E is E1, E2, En. And this is the variance covariance matrix of E. Uh, so, from here, I can write, you know, the variance of, variance of Ei is then equal to sigma square 1 minus the uh, ith diagonal element it is 1 minus i 1 minus h i i. So, h i i is the uh, ith diagonal element of h okay, where H i i is the ith diagonal element of the hat matrix H. And similarly, you know, you can find the covariance between uh, not necessary, but you know just covariance of between the ith residual and the jth residual. See, E i e is a, you can find it from here uh, that is equal to sigma square h i j of course, a minus here. Okay. Well, uh, I have something uh, to say uh, more about uh, this uh, the ith diagonal element. Uh, okay. Well, so what is HII? HII is the ith diagonal element of the hat matrix 
H and the hat matrix H is uh, equal to X X prime X inverse X prime. So, what is this X? X is uh, uh, you know the coefficient matrix sort of. Uh, so, X has the rows uh, X 1, X 2 prime X n prime. So, X i prime is associated with the ith observation. right? Now, I am interested in the ith diagonal element of this hat matrix. So, uh, I hope you understand that H i i is then uh, just X i prime X prime X inverse X i. So, where, where X i prime is the ith row of X matrix. Uh, so, it it you know you, you can check that what H i i does is that H i i measures the distance of ith observation from the center of center of x coordinate and uh, you have to understand okay so uh, so this is enough to uh, explain you know this is what the hii is that uh, is this quantity and the xi is the X i prime is the ith row of the X matrix, and then uh, H i i uh, measures the distance of the ith observation uh, from the center of X coordinate. Okay, and uh, it's not difficult to observe, you know, realize that H i i they are in between zero to one. So. Uh, what message I want to give from uh, from this uh, HII is that you know you, you must have understood that HII is the um, ith diagonal element of the hat matrix H, and it measures the distance of the ith observation from the center of x coordinate. And now you recall the definition of uh, leverage point. A leverage point is uh, a point which has unusual x coordinate. So, it is quite obvious is that you no know, the h i i is going to be large if the ith observation is a leverage point. So, uh, you know somehow you know, from h i i we can get information about the leverage point. Okay. So, this is what I wanted to mention here. Uh, next we, we move to you know uh, some uh, there are various type of residuals till now we know only one residual that is E i that is called the regular residual and we will uh, I will introduce you know uh, three more uh, scaled res residuals uh, in this lecture. Okay. The first I will talk about uh, studentized residual. Okay. So, what is student sized residual? We define a 
we define Ri as Ei by its standard deviation. Uh, what we know, what we did just now is that we have uh, computed the variance of Ei. Variance of Ei is not sigma square. We know that variance of Ei is equal to sigma square into 1 minus h i i right. Uh, now, the standard standard deviation of E i is the just the square root of this quantity and since sigma square is not known, we generally you know estimate sigma square by m s residual. So, the studentized residual r i is nothing but this thing m s residual into 1 minus h i i. So, e i by its the i th residual by its uh, uh, divided by uh, its uh, standard deviation. Okay. So, it is uh, very easy to observe that studentized residuals have constant variance. that is variance of r i is always going to be equal to 1 regardless of the location in x coordinate. in x coordinate. Of course, when the form of the model is correct. So, this is uh, uh, one scaled residual. Uh, next, uh, we will be talking about uh, uh, standardized residual. Okay. Uh, so, what is a standardized residuals? Uh, standard residual is defined by d i equal to ith residual divided by just m s residual. So, what we did here is that we have just replaced you know uh, uh, we are just approximating the standard deviation of E i the actual standard deviation is this quantity or actual variance is this quantity and uh, what we do in the standardized residual is that we approximate this quantity by sigma square. Okay. So, here we approximate m s residual as variance of i th residual e i. Okay. Uh, 
so uh, until now we know about uh, two uh, scaled residual uh, one is uh, standardized residual and uh, the other one is uh, studentized uh, residual and uh, both the scaled residuals uh, they give almost the similar information uh, but uh, in some cases they are different okay so i'll just give one example you know uh, this example uh, is from a book by montgomery uh, there you know i, I, I uh, we have the value of uh, studentized residual and the standardized residual we'll compare and we'll see when the uh, values both uh, the those two scaled residuals are almost similar and when they are different okay so this is uh, an example so this is an example uh, from uh, uh, montgomery book here the first column is the observation number uh, there are 25 observations uh, and the second column is the delivery time which is uh, uh, which is uh, uh, the response variable okay, the responsible response variable is the delivery time y in minutes and these are the values uh, and uh, the re there are two regressors here uh, one is the number of cases it is denoted by x1 and the other one is uh, x2 uh, which is the distance in feet okay so uh, so this is an example with uh, this is an example of multiple linear regression model uh, with two regressors and uh, one response variable and uh, you know how to how to fit uh, a multiple linear regression model to this data uh, that we have discussed in the previous module uh, and here is the fitted uh, model okay once you have the fitted model you know the actual value of the response variable you know the fitted value of the observation uh, of the response variable then you can compute you know you can compute ei which is equal to yi minus yi hat okay so i have the table for this uh, uh, regular residuals here is the table uh, well so what it says is that you know the first uh, column is the number of observations uh, the second column is ei minus uh, yi minus y hat so the second column uh, rep uh, gives the uh, residuals i mean the regular residual ei uh, the third column gives the standardized residual ei by uh, root of ms residual and the third column uh, fourth column uh, gives uh, uh, studentized residual okay now uh, if we uh, look at these observations carefully first uh, first let me you know refer the previous uh, thing here you can note that uh, the ninth observation which has unusual x coordinate so here the x1 value is 30 uh, whereas the center of x1 is you know quite less compared to 30 and uh, the value of the x, uh, regressor x2 is 1460 uh, which is also uh, quite large uh, compared to the center of x2 coordinate 
Okay, so it appears that you know this seems to be a uh, this seems to be the ninth observation uh, seems to be a leverage point or an influential observation. And uh, let me check the residual for the ninth observation. Note that the residual E 9 that is the residual for the ninth observation is 7.41 and uh, which is uh, you know uh, this is suspiciously uh, large this residual compared to the other residuals and also let me check uh, the value of uh, standardized residual for the ninth observation that is 2.27 and the value of the studentized residual for the ninth observation is 3.21. Okay. Uh, instead of now, what I want to, I want to make observation here. Uh, what I want to comment here, you know, my statement is that uh, this R9 is substantially larger than D9. Whereas, you know, if you come, if you compare, you know, R8 and D8, there is no much difference. Similarly, uh, say R7 and uh, D7, there is not much difference between between the uh, between the standardized residual and the uh, studentized residual so uh, uh, my final conclusion here you know what i want what i have observed or um, uh, what you need to know is that uh, that that the st standardized residual and the uh, studentized residual they they give almost the same information similar information but there will be a substantial difference between the between the standardized residual and the studentized residual if if the observation if if the associated observation is an influential observation or or um, or leverage point so, uh, if the given point is, uh, you know, the given observation is uh, is uh, is leverage point or influential point, then there is there will there will be a uh, substantial difference between the studentized residual and uh, and the standardized residual. Otherwise, they are almost uh, similar. And you know, you have to you have to understand why uh, why it is so. Uh, just uh, just give outline uh, of the f of this uh, fact you know let me just recall what is uh, what is studentized residual uh, studentized residual is ri which is equal to ei by ms residual into 1 minus hii this is the studentized residual and standardized residual I think it is d i, d i is equal to e i by root over of m s residual. Now, uh, in if the i if the observation is an influential observation, then h i i is uh, going to be large. So, h i the limit for h i i is it is it is between 0 to 1. Uh, if this is large that means, this is close to 1 and then this is small. The denominator is small means the whole thing is large. Okay. So, that is why uh, and, uh, and in case of standardized residual h i i is treated as 0 always. 
Okay? So, if, if the ith observation is uh, an influential observation, then hii is going to be uh, large. Uh, hii is large means 1 minus hii is small, that means the denominator is small and uh, uh, then the whole thing is going to be uh, large. So, that is why you know uh, in case you know you, you can uh, this is one way you know the, to identify whether the observation is influential or not um, looking at the difference between the uh, studentized residual and the uh, standardized residual. Um, okay, I have to stop now. Thank you.